Hello everyone, welcome to Target Focus Life. Today we're taking a look at my top picks for the best semi-auto shotguns of 2022. You ready? Let's go! my picks for top guns this year might look a little bit different because I've reviewed other guns I have a lot more experience and with that experience some guns that were at the top of the list last year aren't necessarily gonna make it this year I have five different categories that I'm looking at starting with best play shooting gun then we're gonna look at best duck hunting best upland hunting gun best all-purpose shotgun and then we're gonna round it out with best shotgun for the buck for each category I've picked Two guns, one inertia, one gas gun. Let's jump in with the top clay shooting gun, starting with the gas gun. I have selected the Beretta A400 Excel. This is the new edition of the Excel. The last one had a blue receiver. As you can see, this looks a little bit different than the old Excel. Oversized controls, one thing that I love. It has a weighted cap that can be adjusted to get the right balance for you. It has the kickoff recoil system. Handles recoil really nice. Feels a little funky, but it does handle it really nice. Gas gun, so it's soft shooting. Really nice gun overall. I love the way it looks. It shot really well. Only thing I don't love about this gun is that it has a flat rib. I much prefer a stepped up rib. Sometimes I can come down to personal preference. I find myself peaking a little bit too much when I shoot these flat rib guns. But overall, this is a great gun in the hands. Nice palm swell, good balance, easy to mount, easy to swing, very light on the recoil, great gun to shoot. That's my pick for gas gun, best clay shooting gun. This is one of those guns that it's maybe a little bit more sporting clay gun. It's not necessarily a trap gun. But with the two beads, I could easily adapt this to trap if I needed an all around clay shooting gun. For the inertia gun for clay shooting, I have selected the Benelli Ethos Sport. Now the one I have in my hands is a 28 gauge. I wouldn't necessarily go with the 28 gauge. I love the ergonomics of this gun. It's nice and light, has an interchangeable carbon fiber rib ported barrels to help reduce muzzle jump, help reduce recoil a little bit. It's just a beautiful gun overall. I mean, when you look at semi-autos, often they aren't that attractive on the eyes. It can just kind of be black and boring or just basic camo as some guns are. But Benelli did a really nice job with this, has the Comfort Tech cheek pad. So if I was going out busting clays and wanted to grab inertia gun, this would be a great option for it. And when we're talking clay shooting guns, I'm not looking at a specific discipline like trap, skeet, or sporting clays. I'm just kind of talking all around. We could break into each discipline and things might look a little different, but that would get pretty complicated. Those are my clay shooting guns for 2022. Now let's move into duck hunting. If I had to grab a gas gun and I'm heading to the duck blind, what would I grab? I gotta say, it is the Beretta A400 Extreme Plus. Now this thing is a tank. When you pick it up, it's pretty heavy. But if it's a duck gun, you're not probably walking long distances, you're more sitting in the blind, that type of thing. So I'm not concerned about the weight. In fact, the weight is kind of nice because if you're shooting those heavy duck loads or goose loads, it's gonna help you handle recoil a lot better. And this gun handles recoil really well. It's got the kickoff recoil system, which is really nice. Oversized controls, great when you got those gloves on. It's got the rubber over molded grips. Also great when you have wet hands or cold hands. Easy to get a hold of. The more I shoot this gun, the more I enjoy it. It's a solid shooter. Great duck hunting gun. On the videos that I've made with this gun, I read the comments that you guys put out. Everyone that has this gun loves it. I have seen next to zero negative feedback about this gun, which goes to say a lot. And that's a big thing. When I make these reviews, I love to see what other people have to say about the guns, the people that are using them in the field, and a lot of lovers of the Breda A400 Extreme Plus. Now when it comes to an inertia gun, what am I gonna pick? If I'm heading out duck hunting, what would be my go-to inertia gun? I consider all these guns based on value as well. I'm not breaking it down like I do in the Sosa test, but just kind of what is a great value, right? And I look at the Affinity 3. 
One, it's a great looking gun. Two, it's a super reliable gun. I've shot it in all sorts of tests, the freezing gun test, dumping snow and water in there and freezing it. This gun continues to impress me. This year, I was making a video and I wanted to see how fast I could shoot it. If I could shoot as fast as I can with the SX4, the fastest shotgun that I've probably ever shot, this can do it. Extremely fast, feels great in the hands, very durable, very reliable, and at a great price point. There's a lot of shotguns that are $1,600, $1,800. This Bronco Affinity 3 is closer to that $1,000 range. Just a phenomenal gun for the money. So if I'm going out chasing ducks and I want inertia gun, very simple to break down, minimal parts, the Affinity 3's got my vote for top waterfall gun in the inertia category. All right, we're moving on, stepping it up to Upland. Gas Upland gun. If I'm gonna grab one, gonna be walking long days in the field in the Dakotas or the prairies, I'm probably gonna have to go with the Winchester SX4, specifically the Upland edition. Now it's not all that much different than just the regular SX4s, other than it looks like it's made for walking the prairies, right? Out chasing birds, beautiful gun, super light on the recoil, very well balanced, easy to carry all day, super reliable gun. SX4 is like the Affinity 3, a gun that just continues to impress me, especially when you're considering the price point. Again, SX4, depending on what model you're going with, right around that $1,000 mark. Black one's less than that, this one more than that, but super reliable, great gun. The Winchester SX4 gets my vote for the best gas semi-auto upland gun. Now, if we're gonna look at inertia-driven upland guns, one gun that stands out in my mind that I wanna carry in the field all day long, not only does it look fantastic, feels great in the hands, very reliable, the Browning A5. Now, this is a 16 gauge. I'd be happy to hunt with the 16 gauge, also available in 12 gauge. This gun is just one of those guns where you grab it and it feels right. Like, I could walk all day with this gun no problem, plus it has that nostalgic look of the classic A5s. If I'm gonna upland hunt, walk all day, be in the field, be in the woods maybe even, chasing grouse, this would be my top pick for an inertia gun. Next category we're gonna take a look at is all-purpose guns. If I just wanna buy a shotgun, I wanna do a little bit of everything with it. I wanna pheasant hunt, I wanna duck hunt, I wanna shoot clays, maybe even do a little turkey hunting. There's a few guns that stand out in my mind. On the gas side, we have the Mossberg 940 Pro. Now in the past, I've been a little critical of Mossberg. I did a review on the 940 Pro this year, very pleasantly surprised me. A lot of great things to love about this gun. Shoot it super fast, by the way. Very reliable, pretty soft on the recoil. Ergonomics, maybe not my favorite but all around good performer, the 940 Pro is that gun. I shot a lot of these guns at paper, patterned them. 940 Pro patterned well, especially again, another shotgun under $1,000. If I wanna just do a little bit of everything, 940 Pro is a good way to go. On top of that, it is drilled and tapped, so if you wanna put an optic on there, hunt turkeys, you can absolutely do a little bit of everything with this shotgun. It does have the oversized bolt handle and bolt release. It's milled out for easy loading. If there's one downside of this gun that I don't love, again, it's got a flat rib. I much prefer that stepped up rib. Put it in the comments, what do you prefer? Flat rib, stepped up rib. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, say, I have no idea what you're talking about, Steve. Spend a little more time talking about what that is, but I think most of you probably already know. Plus, if it's good enough for Jerry Michalik, I think it's probably good enough for me too, right? For an inertia pick on best, just all purpose gun. We're gonna jump up in price quite a bit from the 940 Pro, but this is a gun I really enjoyed shooting this year. It is the Benelli Ethos Cordobo Best. The gun so good that it has three names. This is one of those guns, it feels great in the hands. Just a lot of things to love about it. Shot it extremely well at clays. Just a good all around gun. Got a carbon fiber stepped up rib, mid bead, front bead, ported barrel, it's got the best coating, which basically means you can leave it in salt water and it won't rust. I don't know, I wouldn't try it, but very durable gun. You don't have to go with the Ethos Cordoba Best. I would also say, as far as just all around guns, the Benelli Ethos is just a fantastic inertia operated gun. 
A lot of things to love about it, but if I was gonna do a little bit of everything, that would be my top pick this year. All these results are open to changing. As I shoot more guns, as I get more experience, I become a little more well-rounded and my picks could change. Now, we're moving on to the fifth and final category, which is best bang for the buck. Looking at gas guns first, which one do you think is the best bang for the buck? I've had ideas over the years. It evolved a little bit this year. In prior years, I would have said, hands down, Winchester SX4 is the best bang for the buck. It still is one of the best bangs for the buck. I think it's a neck and neck tie between the SX4 and the Mossberg 940 Pro. You're getting a fantastic gun, very reliable gas system, a lot of things to love about this gun. Oversized control, milled out loading port, very, very solid contender with the SX4 for the best bang for the buck in a gas gun. So if you go to me and say, Steve, what's the best bang for the buck? Pretty simple in a gas gun. Mossberg 940 Pro, Winchester SX4, not the Upland version. That's a little more spendy. Just go with that black shadow and you're going to get a phenomenal gun for less than $1,000. The only edge I would give the Mossberg 940 Pro over the SX4 is that the 940 Pro has shims to really get your gun dialed in. Unfortunately, when Winchester went from the SX3 to the SX4, they dropped the shims. You can't put shims in there. At least Winchester doesn't sell them. So that'd be a nice feature to have. Now I could throw one more in there. It'd be the Beretta A300 Ultima, but so many people have had trigger issues with their guns. I don't know if Beretta has that resolved yet. Once they do, that's right up there in the top of the list for best bang for the buck as well. Now when it comes to inertia guns, what is the best bang for a buck? Well, this gun here, the Weatherby Element, was a gun that totally surprised me when I reviewed it. Really didn't have high expectations for this gun. Weatherby is a little bit more known for their rifles than they are their shotguns. Inertia operated shotgun at a great price that worked extremely well. Very impressed with it. Love the rubber over moldings. The controls, very basic. The loading port, slightly beveled. But all around, when I shot this gun, really felt that it was a solid gun for the money. When you consider that it's about half the price of some of these other inertia guns, this is a great option for best bang for the buck inertia gun. But I got one more. There's another gun that stands out every time I shoot it. It's already been in the top five list of inertia guns, but it is the Franke Affinity 3. I've already said it in this video, but this gun continues to amaze me. Great gun for the money. Great gun, period. But when you consider it's, again, like the Element, half the price of some of the other inertia guns out there, you can't go wrong with the Franke Affinity 3. There's a lot of adjustability in this gun with shims and spacers, change your cast, change your drop, really a phenomenal gun. So now I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you saw my list of top semi-auto shotguns in the five different categories, which ones do you agree with? Which ones do you disagree with? I know there's gonna be some folks that disagree with me and that's totally fine. These are just my opinions of the top semi-auto shotguns of 2022. Next year we'll make another list. Also put down in the comments what other semi-auto shotguns you wanna see me review in 2023. Thanks so much for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, whether you're in the field or in life, you're only gonna hit those shots that you're laser focused on. So live, target focused. See ya!